Um, and, and not surprisingly, the next section we're going to talk about is crypto. Uh, Ryan Dahl. What's Ryan Dahl? Anybody know the... The, the, uh, the R and R It's the... <laughs> he is the, the R and R No, you're right. It is Ravest. Oh. Ravest Jameer Altman. Uh, no, Ryan Dahl is... Um, uh, is, well, if you actually have that over it, it says it is a uh, Reindahl is the uh, Reindahl is what was submitted to the uh, AES uh, competition. Reindahl actually covers more or has more options than AES. AES has specific uh, block sizes that it will work with for input and output, I believe, whereas Reindahl um, also has specific ones, but it actually covers covers more options than what your standard AAS will. But a detection of Reindahl on the, the S inverse, inverse X, S box, that's going to be the same thing as, as AAS. So it's potentially, maybe it's using Reindahl with some funky options, or maybe it's just using AAS. So. Okay. Close out of this. Six sixty four encryption. Des AS Camellia. Ah. Camellia. Um, who here has heard of Camellia encryption algorithm? Where have you heard that? Or or what what uses that? <coughs> Poison Ivory, which has been reported on in lots of different places. Um, he says Camellia. Camellia is, I forget if it was developed or it's just used as a standard encryption thing in Japan, I want to say. Yes. Yeah. So like, like we have AES, Camellia, it's just another standard crypto thing. Um, but we don't we don't see it a lot here in America, um, or yeah, I'll say that. Uh, RC4. Um, what's what's the difference between RC4 and these other algorithms? Anybody know? Stream cipher. Yeah, stream cipher. RC4 is is a stream cipher, um, whereas these other ones are block ciphers. Um, it's a good crypto class that I think it was open sourced, at least the content? Uh, we're in the process right now, getting the content public release. Yeah, so it's it will be public release, oh that's right, it will be public release um, where, where the instructor covers this stuff. It, it's worth checking out, um, it can be useful for some of your malware analysis. Um, being able to identify you know, what's the difference between a stream cipher and block cipher. So, guys, open up this malware.exe from 4A or, yeah, from 4A to 9. This is the same one that we had used before, the same malware.exe. So, if you still have it on your desktop, if you didn't run it, then uh, go ahead and, and load that into IO. If you don't, Still have it if you if you remove it to clean up, just grab it from that zip, load it into PID, take a look at that, um, and also do the I to end, but with the R data section. And uh, compare compare the results from PID and from I to end. So I've loaded up the exe into PID as well as the IDA entropy calculator and PID identified a bunch of things. The entropy calculator identified a bunch of locations that seem to have high entropy. They don't exactly match though, although there's potential for this one, CRC32, maybe to go into that range. 
But sometimes when you take a look at the entropy calculation, it doesn't exactly match up with anything in here. And that may be because this is only detecting certain things and the entropy will hit on, on other things that are part of the same. Um, or if we were to, to go in and take a look, maybe there's a, there's a long string there of, uh, of, of unique uh, characters, one right after the other. Um, just be aware of what your tools will and won't show you. That's the basic idea with this. So Frank, if you had a, uh, no, I guess with the P ID uh, crypto plugin, yeah. is the first number like a size of range that it's saying, and the second number is a star address, or what's the first number? No, that first number, I believe, is the... Like a file offset? Or? Yeah, I want to say file offset. Um, because if we take a look at, well, right, where is, ah, let me, there's CFF Explorer, okay, so if we, let me close this item, and if we take a look at the crypto analyzer, put that over there, we take a look at, oh, this in CFF Explorer, Take a look at the section headers. So, yeah, those are. So it looks like I was initially thinking those were offsets from maybe the the base, but it doesn't look like. Yeah, it's definitely a file offset. If you yeah. The address calculator. Mm -hmm. Throw the DA in. Okay. Or address converter rather. Oh, yeah, the address converter. So is, is the entropy number basically like the number of bits per byte that are being encoded in a run of uh, data? I think that is a standard Shannon entropy calculation. So, I mean, it, it shouldn't be surprising when you have essentially random data expressed in base 64, which only uses six out of the eight possible bits, then it's close to six. It's close, right. And then your your compressed and encrypted data is very close to the eight. Right. So one of the cool things here, well we have the PID Crypto Analyzer plugin open is that it has this little export button down here. If you click on that to file, we have these IDC options, which is a IDA scripting language, IDC. If we choose the last one just to grab both bookmarks and comments, um, and we save that to a file, I'll just save it to desktop, give you guys an idea. <coughs> I got this canal.idc down here. So now if I go and I oops, load that into IDA, oh, I already have an IDB. If I load that into to IDA, load up my malware, and I go to file, IDC file, and I grab that file that I exported from PEID. It now close that. It now ran and went through and highlighted, like if I search for Adler, um, it added comments where it's identified these uh, these values. And it even ad added a nice little explanation of hey, this is used by you know ZBIT compression. Um, nice little functionality for the PEID plugin. Uh, definitely, definitely suggest using it. So what you do is in IDA, you go to file, IDC file, and you just, you open it, and after it opens, it 
um, that is that is essentially it that runs it. You'll get a, a little window that pops up that will let you run it again or, or edit it. You can just close that because you'll essentially have it there. And then you can do a search for one of the things that it detected on, like Antler I searched on. Show me here. Cool feature. Tools that end up working together. Really nice. So just something to be aware of. Sure, we'll save. Okay. That was yeah, that was that.